It's no longer a question of will they impeach the governor, it's a question of if they even can. The good thing here is that nobody was injured, but there are a lot of people who were shaken up about the incident. Tim and Trishna, I'm getting my butt kicked here in foosball by a 12-year-old, but it's not all fun and games here at the Boys and Girls Club in Albany. They're having some deep conversations about the violence happening outside these walls. If you pass through Albany, you've seen that New York Tough sign, hopefully now a sign of good things to Come. I'm live in Albany tonight, Lewis Finley, News 10 ABC. The investigation into sexual misconduct complaints against Governor Andrew Cuomo is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to his impeachment investigation. We need to include all abuses of power. Scandals plaguing the governor's office this past year. Judiciary Committee member Phil Steck wants to include investigations from underreported nursing home data, the governor's book deal, and even bullying tactics into the scope of the impeachment. We need to make sure that the office of governor uh, is not out of control. Steck says by adding these parts to the imminent impeachment proceedings would be a check to this and future governor's powers. The key here is not to have a governor who persists in abusing power. I think it's very important to establish a principle that you don't lie to the legislature. Do you think at this point the investigation really matters? It seems like people have already made up their mind. It does seem like people have already made up their mind, but there is a process. Democratic lawmakers are waiting for the process to play out. Some say in a matter of weeks. Republicans are looking to nail the governor immediately on the AG's findings into sexual misconduct complaints. When you see a district attorney talk about investigating with law enforcement and wanting more information, it's very problematic. Assemblyman John McDonald says in order to successfully try the governor, the assembly needs to be prepared. I think it's important that if you're going to go into battle, that you better be prepared. Because one thing about this governor, whether you like him or not, he is always prepared and he's ready to do battle. I'm hoping it'll wake us up, but, you know, how many more destinies are we going to have out there? It's a question Lillian Garland doesn't want to think so about. Sad. The recent rash and shootings hitting close to home with the death of 15-year-old Destiny Green. Every time I, you know, me and my sisters are riding, I'm hearing signs. I was like, oh, somebody got shot. Garland's lived in the West Hill neighborhood for 30 years. She's seen the stark contrast to what it was like for her growing up versus kids nowadays. The difference, she says, really comes down to community. We looked out for each other back then. Like, now people are afraid to say something to a kid. Oh. Someone who's not afraid to speak up is Jamel Hood. You want to teach kids to follow through on everything they do in life. The Frank Chapman Center is a couple blocks away from the latest shooting. The building itself has a bullet hole from a few years ago. Hood says his goal is to turn things around. Lose a child over some senseless killings is, 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 is bananas. I mean, Outrageous. China Forney, another teen murdered earlier this month, having a lasting impact on the mentor. And the mom is just a hardworking woman. For her to lose her baby, I, I mean, I, I, I can't fathom what she's going through. Hoods offered space to the Albany Police Neighborhood Engagement Unit inside the building. They're a part of a greater police presence in the streets the past couple days. And while everyone is working to figure out how to curb the problem, Hood says there's one place they should start. Lewis, it's a whole combination of the music, the drugs that they're using, but I'll go right back to coaching at home. It's the accountability starts at home. It's not fair that we had to live like this. Asia <laughs> McGee says no one should have to live like this. Mounds of trash on the next door porch left behind from college students, attracting flies and leaving smells the Pine Hills resident describes as unbearable. And that smell is comes right through my house. She's lived in the neighborhood for a couple years with her two children and says the trash problem hasn't gotten better and the debris drawn some pretty unsavory characters. Uh, raccoons was over here, possums was over here. So then you have homeless people coming and ripping the bags open, making it even worse. The pile up sat on the porch for a week. Shortly after the owner of the building drove past our interview, a cleanup crew soon arrived and tensions flared. Well, I can't oh sit God. the outside. I can't open my window because of the book.
becomes a Herculean task to have to get rid of it. It's not just the buildup of trash, but a frustration from both residents and DGS. Deputy Commissioner Frank Zioli says his crews can tackle the streets and sidewalks, but it could take them time to clear private property. It's an unfortunate thing that, that other residents have to smell and see this, but we do have to follow the law. In a situation like McGee's, DGS can only act after they've sent a certified letter to the building owner, plus time for the owner to act, which could take about two weeks. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know what to say. I'm just disgusted. For my darling, I love you, and I always will. A year without fans, the Saratoga racetrack is back and busier than ever. <laughs> Food, fashion, and betting, the three staples of the Saratoga racetrack. I needed the help of a seasoned track vet to show me how to really experience opening day. I'm 66 in October. I've been going to the track with my father since I was seven. We trained our own horses. My new friend Ken came all the way from Boston. This is his 30th year at the track. Even when fans weren't allowed inside the race course due to COVID last year, Ken rented a room across the street and watched from afar. The best horses in the country, if not the world, the highest purses and the greatest jockeys as well. Okay. Bets made, now time for the moment of truth, that first race. The sights of fans gathering trackside, something not seen in two years. What came in third? That's, I don't know if third means anything. I tried my luck for a second time. Unfortunately, no beginner's luck. Best lobster roll I've had on opening day. Ever. No luck on the racetrack, but we found a winner with food choices. First time I'm trying it. So far, so good. I heard the chicken was banging, and it absolutely is. And years may go. Today, everyone's a winner. All just a little bit of the sights and sounds of opening day. You have to love the atmosphere. You love the people. I live for this place. I love